Welcome to the Corner Post channel, your ultimate source for all things football. Dive into the exhilarating world of the beautiful game with us as we bring you the latest updates, breaking news, in-depth analyses, and exclusive insights into the footballing universe. From electrifying match highlights to expert commentary, transfer rumors to tactical masterstrokes, join us on this thrilling ride through the highs and lows of the footballing landscape. Whether you're a die-hard fan or a casual enthusiast, get ready to score big on all the football news you crave. Right here on the Corner Post channel, Ronaldo is investing $40 million in a free-to-play football game. The competition between football superstars Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi will probably never end, as the Portuguese baller announced a $40 million investment in UFL, a free-to-play football video game which will compete with football, whose ambassador is the Argentine forward Lionel Messi. Ronaldo believes that the game can become the new breed in football gaming. The game developers believe that the game promises a fair, skill-first approach for gamers created by gamers, which translates to a game focused on being skill-based and made by fellow gamers. Ronaldo's investment is set to collide head-on with EA Sports FC, formerly known as FIFA, which is considered the premier football video game in the world. The unique selling point of CR7's investment is that the game will have free access and won't feature any mandatory payments or subscription fees. Nominees for the Best FIFA Men's Coach Award confirmed. Manchester City's treble-winning coach, Pep Guardiola, is among the finalists for the Best FIFA Men's Coach Award. As announced on Wednesday, Guardiola is a strong favorite following City's triumph in the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League titles last season. In the men's category, Guardiola shares the limelight with Simone Inzaghi, who guided Inter Milan to the Champions League final and secured the Coppa d'Italia. The third finalist is Luciano Spalletti, responsible for ending Napoli's 33-year Scudetto drought by securing the Serie A title with five games to spare. On the other hand, England women's manager Serena Wiedemann is among the finalists for the Best FIFA Women's Watch Awards. Wiedemann, a three-time winner, currently holds the award. Having clinched the Euros, Wiedemann steered England to another major final at this summer's Women's World Cup, where they were defeated by Spain. Emma Hayes, the coach of Chelsea, is also in contention after a successful season, clinching the Women's Super League and the FA Cup. Hayes will depart Chelsea in May to assume the role of head coach for the United States women's national team. Jonathan Geraldes, who guided Barcelona's women's team to the league title with just one loss all season and secured their second Champions League crown, is the third candidate. The Best FIFA Football Award 2023, celebrating the exceptional individuals in the world's most popular sport, will be held on 15th January 2024 in London. What to know about Turkey's football crisis after attack on referee? Turkey is set to resume its league football on Tuesday, ending a brief suspension in the domestic competition caused by an attack on a referee by a club's president who was later arrested by local authorities. Turkish football's night of shame has caused the country's most popular sport to spiral into a crisis and has raised questions about on-pitch violence towards match officials. The Turkish Super League match between MKA Ankara Gükü and Kaker Rizespor ended in a 1-1 draw on Monday after the visitors equalized in the last minute of added time. After the full-time whistle was blown, Ankara Gükü president Farik Koka rushed onto the pitch with a group of men and knocked out referee Halil Yumut Meller with a blow to the left side of his face. Meller was kicked several times in the ensuing melee, which occurred when fans invaded the pitch. The 37-year-old match official was shown standing minutes later with a black eye that had swelled up the left part of his face. He eventually made it to the dressing room with the help of the police. Koka appeared to be incensed at Meller for sending off one of his players and then awarding a stoppage time goal that allowed Rizespor to leave Ankara with a draw. Meller released a statement on Tuesday saying Koka had threatened his life. Farik Koka punched me under my left eye and I fell to the ground. While I was on the ground, they kicked my face and other parts of my body many times," Meller said. He told me and my fellow referees, I will finish you. Addressing me in particular, he said, I will kill you. 
Meller was released from hospital in Ankara on Wednesday after undergoing observation and receiving a phone call from President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Mailer, a respected referee with accreditation to officiate international matches, is expected to recover and join the refereeing crew of the Euro 2024 Championship, to be held from June to July in Germany. Brighton manager Roberto De Zerbi had said he wants the prestige of winning their Europa League group. The Seagulls, who are guaranteed at least second place in Group B, host leaders Marcel on Thursday needing a win to top the pool and book their place in the last 16. Failure to win would mean they enter February's playoffs. Marcel are a very good team, but we have the ambition to finish top of our group, De Zerbi said. It is a prestigious thing to finish at the top of the table, because we will play two games less in February, and also prestigious for the history of our club. We want to try to win because we are serious people. When we work, we always want to show our best and do our best. While the eventual group winners will move straight into the last 16, the runners-up will face a playoff against one of the eight teams finishing third in their Champions League groups. Brighton have no new selection concerns following Saturday's 1-1 draw against Burnley in the Premier League. Jakub Motor will not be involved as the midfielder is not in the club's Europa League squad list, and De Zerbi is hopeful forward Danny Welbeck could return to the bench for Sunday's visit to his former club Arsenal having been out since late October with a muscle problem. Newcastle United's Champions League campaign ended in heartbreak on a night of emotion and drama on Tyneside, as AC Milan came from behind to win at St. James Park and send them out of Europe. The Toon Army were dreaming of a place in the knockout stages when they took the lead through Joe Linton's 33rd-minute Thunderbolt, while Borussia Dortmund led against Paris as Germain in Germany. It was an outcome that would have sent Newcastle through on head-to-head -head results against PSG but the mood shifted in a matter of minutes just before the hour. Teenager Warren Zaire Emery equalized for the French champions in Germany, then former Chelsea forward Christian Pulisic leveled for Milan. As both sides pushed for a winner in an open game, Milan keeper Mike Magnan did brilliantly to turn Bruno Guimaraes shot onto the woodwork before Rafael Leo raced clear for the Italians, only to shoot against the foot of the post. Newcastle's fate was sealed six minutes from time when Milan struck ruthlessly on the counter-attack, substitute Samuel Chukwiz curling a superb finish high past Martin Dubravka. It left manager Eddie Howe and his players devastated following a return to the Champions League, which was fiercely fought, but has ended with them bottom of Group F, and without even the consolation of a place in the Europa League. Newcastle regret what might have been. When the halftime whistle blew to a huge Tyneside roar, Newcastle were on course for the last 16 of the Champions League, but when a dramatic second half came to its conclusion, they were out of Europe completely. It summed up the swings in fortune on a night when attention was divided between what was unfolding at St. James Park and events in Germany, followed closely to see what impact they had on Newcastle's fate. Newcastle's destiny was out of their own hands after the controversial stoppage time penalty which gave PSG a draw in Paris two weeks ago, but they were fulfilling their part of the bargain by dominating a lackluster AC Milan side, overawed by the intensity of their opponents and the atmosphere. The problem was that Newcastle were always living on the edge, and it so proved with those goals. First for PSG in Germany then Milan on Tyneside, which was the start of the downfall.